out to non-binary pals. My name is Mal. I'm the zookeeping interpreter at Trailside Museums and Zoo. And welcome to our new segment, In the Kitchen with Mal. Tonight, I'll be having a dinner party. And for the main course, we'll be making soup. So let's start cooking. To make this soup, you're going to need molasses, brown sugar, overripe bananas, and beer. Now, in no particular order or any sort of measuring, we're going to throw together all of our ingredients in a big mixing bowl and mix until it is a pasty consistency. Once you're done with that, you have your soup. Good soup. I'm just kidding. You guys might have already guessed this soup isn't for people and we're not having a human dinner party. Tonight, we're going moth fishing. And this right here I'm going to be using as an attractant to help lure moths in to my cottage. The next thing we need to get this party started is a bed sheet and a high powered LED spotlight or black light. We're going to string this sheet up here and shine the light against it. Because moths are attracted to light, hopefully we can get a couple to land on the sheet. Our next step is to spread our attractant on the tree bark. Now the only thing we have left to do is to wait till sundown because most moth species are nocturnal. Alright folks, we have nightfall. The rig is set up and it's time to start fishing for some moths. Did you know that moths belong to the second largest order of insects called Lepidoptera? The first largest order of insects, Coleoptera, is beetles, which are in fact the most numerous animal on earth. Lepidoptera consists of over 135,000 species of moths. In fact, scientists think that there's still maybe another 100,000 species left to be discovered. The phobia of moths is called Lepidopterophobia. Try saying that five times fast. Now moths are going to smell their way to the attractant here using their sense of smell called chemoreception. Now moths don't smell their nose like us humans and other mammals do. Instead, they use their antennae as chemoreceptors. Now moths have developed the sense of smell because they find their weights through means of pheromones. Pheromones can be given off in special scales on their wings or in glands in their bodies. And it is often how the male moth finds his lady. Now, male moths can smell a female for up to seven miles away. Now, while we're waiting for our moth friends to show up, let's try looking around the yard to see what other bug friends we can find. Holy mackerel! Check out the size of this orb weaver. Spectacular, oh my goodness. I've never seen a spider this big. Wow, she is fantastic. So she's a species of orb weaver and you can tell that by her big round abdomen and also this beautiful orb-like web that she is weaving right now as we speak. Oh, hello. She doesn't seem very happy that I'm right in her face. <laughs> this particular orb weaver is a female cross spider, named for the white cross on her abdomen. Females can reach lengths of up to 20 millimeters and build webs up to 40 centimeters in diameter. Orb weavers are clever spiders that like to build their webs next to gardens and lights to attract lots of flying insects, such as flies and mosquitoes. Once prey is entangled in the web, it is quickly captured and wrapped with silk prior to being eaten. Orb weavers are said to eat their webs each night along with the many small insects stuck to it and spin a new web each morning. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of this praying mantis. Holy cow. I'm from upstate New York, so I'm not used to seeing these guys. He's maybe only the third one I've seen around here, but man. I had no idea they got this big. Look at him, looking right at me too. Marvelous, amazing. The Chinese mantis is the largest mantis species in North America. 
and can reach up to five inches in length. It was accidentally introduced in the United States in 1896 in Mount Airy, Pennsylvania. The praying mantis is so named because when waiting for prey, it holds out its front legs in an upright position, as if they are folded in prayer. But don't be fooled by its angelic pose, however, because the mantid is a deadly predator. If a bee or a fly happens to land within its reach, the praying mantis will extend its arms with lightning quick speed and grab the hapless insect. Sharp spines line the mantid's raptoral forelegs, enabling it to grasp the prey tightly as it eats. Some larger mantids can catch and eat lizards, frogs, and even birds. Who says bugs are at the bottom of the food chain? Here's a little friend. Did you know that moths are actually super important pollinators? They're attracted to the nectar that I made for them, and they also love the nectar of flowers. There are diurnal species of moths, such as the hummingbird moth, as well as these nocturnal species that sip the nectar from plants and their hairy little bodies trap pollen to help to pollinate the plants. Here are some moths right now doing some pollinating. Moths sip the nectar of flowers using their long tube-like mouth parts called the proboscis to sip up the nectar like a straw. Look, a baby moth. Moths undergo complete metamorphosis, meaning that they are born from eggs and they start out as caterpillars. They feed on food and grow nearly 100 times in size, where they then spin a cocoon. Inside the cocoon, they completely liquefy and rearrange their organs and guts and come out as beautiful moths. This little guy with this cute yellow stripe here is going to be an army worm moth. The moth's seemingly random and erratic flight pattern is actually an adaptation in order to help them pick up on as many pheromones or scent particles in their surrounding. A special organ called the Johnston's organ, located at the base of the antennae, helps to maintain balance and orientation during this flight. come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, and patterns. To avoid predation, some moths have cryptic coloration to blend into trees, while other moths have brightly colored underwings or startle marks, which they flash to surprise predators. Other moths are mimics and can appear like leaves, bird poop, other bugs, and even as predators themselves. clever tactics to evade predators. Moths do make up vital food sources for birds, bats, frogs, lizards, small mammals, and in some parts of the world, even people. Wow, those were some cool critters. Thank you all for coming to my moth party tonight. I'll see you guys next video. I didn't realize my ring was so